What's up guys, how you doing today? Today let's talk about how to get a seafood processing job in Alaska and monthly pay in 2019, part three. Now guys, I'm gonna keep doing these videos on how to get a job as a seafood processor. I'm gonna do a part four, part five, part six. The reason why is because um, every day, every month, I'm gaining more knowledge, more understanding of the seafood processing business. Right now, I have over five years of experience as a seafood processor in Alaska, and I just want to share the knowledge that I have to the world, because when I first started going, working in the seafood industry, nobody was there to guide me through the process. So I'm here to guide you guys through the process. So first and foremost, what is a seafood processor? Billy Tom, what is a seafood processor? Well, we uh, convert the whole fish or the shell harvest by fishermen into the product that are sold in uh, retail stores and in restaurants. Now, the work is hard being a seafood processor. Work is repetitious with uh, you use your hands, your waist, your elbows, your legs, and it's um, constant, repetitive work. Also, the work environment is cold, wet, it's very, very, very noisy, and it smells bad. And also, this is something else you guys need to remember. You need to remember this. that you do not have to be, have any type of experience in the seafood industry. They will train you. So to be a seafood processor, you need no experience. You will get trained. So you guys need to know that. You need no experience, you'll get trained. Now, how do I get this job in Alaska? Philly Dom, how do I get this job in Alaska? Well, let me tell you how you get this job in Alaska. You need to Google seafood processing jobs in Alaska. Start filling out the applications online da, 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 with the different seafood processing companies. Most of the companies are based out of Seattle, Washington. Now, if you need help picking the different type of jobs, please, please, Reach out to me on uh, Instagram at I am I am underscore Philly Dom, which is my Instagram. It'll be in the description. Also, reach me on my email Andre J nine nine three at yahoo.com. You can reach out to me. I have Facebook as well, but all this information will be in the description. If you read through the description after the video or during the video, and you look down. You'll see the information and I will guide you through the processes. But the best way to reach Philly Dom, you need to hit me up via Instagram or Facebook Messenger or my emails. The emails, guys, I don't I don't all the time answer emails right away. That's why I say Instagram is the fastest way to reach me. Okay. Now the most important Thing you can do once you fill out the application you need to email the company to see where you're at in the process or you need to call them by phone in my opinion the best way to do this is to call them by phone reach out to the HR department talk to somebody in HR build a connect with somebody in HR and call them once a week because these type of jobs they're always, 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 always hiring. But the fastest way I would go about it, even faster than email, is to call the company, connect with HR, like I said, and get a rapport or connect with somebody in HR and call them once a week so you can get the job because they always need people and they hire pretty fast. So you can get in that process, so you can get your interview and they can get you in there and get you the job. Now, you need to remember 
that there are different types of seafood processors. One is a plant facility, AKA the land plant. That's the plant that's on land. Then you have two, you have a floating processors, plant processors, which is a plant that is by the sea, that is exactly what it says, floating processor. And then three is that sea processor, which floats around the sea and they catch their own uh, fish and they process it on their own seafood processing boats or I think um, some um, they buy fish from some fishermen out at sea. But out of them three, you have the land plant, like I said before, that's number one. You have the floating processor, number two, and that's sea. At sea, processor is where you make the most money because they have this thing called a cruise share. Cruise share is you don't get paid hourly. You don't get paid hourly, but you get paid by the catch. And you get a percentage of your, the catch up front, which is 80% 80, 80 for most companies. And then you get 20% on the back. But it varies with every different company. So don't take me, don't take what I said by literally what I'm saying. But it's, it's some type of breakdown like that. Like 80% up front, then 20% on the back end. And that's the at sea processor. That's the one you'll make the most money. But remember, guys, it's a different type of beast. The land processors and the floating processors. I think you can, um, the land processing for sure, you can get off the land processing when there's no work. You can walk around the town or the city where you're at. The floating processor, so you're right by the, um, the land, so you can get off sometime off the, the floating process and probably move around the town. But at sea processors, they don't, you're on that boat for 10 days, 12 days, or whatever. Sometimes you don't even get off that boat. They just drop off the catch and they go back because the more you catch, the more money you make. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up so you know what type of processes, different processing plants there are. I'm gonna say it one more time. You have your land plant, your floating processor, and you have your sea, sea, um, at sea processing. Okay, so make sure, make sure you know what uh, type of seafood processing job you're applying for. That's why I broke it down to you and I went in detail right there because I want you to know and I want you out there to make sure you know what type of processing um, company or plant that you apply for. Okay, now let me let you know things to know about the seafood processing job. Number one, I'll say this again and I'll say this again and again and again and again. No experience is needed for this job. So anybody can apply for this job. But obviously experience helps in any field. If you can ride a forklift, if you have experience working in a kitchen, if you have experience in the maintenance field like a, a welder or something like that, obviously you'll get paid a lot more money and they're in high demand and they always, 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 I can't stress this enough, they always need people for these type of jobs. I cannot stress that enough. And different other positions like as um, far as you working in uh, administration, some of you guys went to college, you might have a college degree, they always need people in administration as well. Two, you uh, work long, hours sometime I like to stress that you work long hours sometimes 8 to 16 hours uh, maybe more of the, more or less it depends if they have fish or not it depends if they have fish or not because some people go up there and they get upset because they're not working every day they only can work when they have fish but, guys, it's a rule to this. 
that can help you. And I didn't know this when I went up there. I had to figure this out by trial and error. Even if they do not have fish, let me repeat this. Even if they do not have fish, they have positions that still need to be maintained in the facility even when there's no fish. So yes, sometimes you will get work even when they don't have fish, but it's just limited job for a limited amount of people. So now what you need to do, you need to talk to your supervisor, you need to talk to your manager, you need to go to their main office there, and you need to talk to the people and see what these jobs are because most seafood processors are just happy sometimes when they don't get fish and they'll just sit around. But if you're the expiring seafood processor and you really want to make a lot of money, even on downtime, there's jobs and opportunities for you. Now, also, I'm going to drop you some jewels because I didn't have this. I had to figure all this out by trial and, trial and ever. This is another way for you to make money. Now, the first way I just told you to get extra hours, even when they don't have fish in your processing plant, you go in your processing plant, you talk to your supervisors and everybody, and they'll help you if they have any position or anything available to get hours. But this is another jewel in this one. Listen to me and listen to me clearly. I worked at a land plant. So if it was no fish at our plant, we had other plants near us. So when you first get up to your, your uh, this only works if you're at a land plant. You can't probably use this on a floating processor or at sea process. But on a land plant, what you can do is you can put applications in when you first get to your facility, maybe on your downtime one day, walk around the town or the city where you're at, find out where other seafood processing companies are and put applications in there and try to get hired with one or two or three other ones. So when your, fish, when your seafood processing plant does not have fish, you can work over there. So say A plant, which is your plant, doesn't have fish, but B, C, and D has fish. You can find out which one of them are having fish, or has the most fish, and you can go work there. So once you get to your land plant, the place, the seafood plant company that hired you, you can go to one of their other, you can go to another plant while you're there and tell them you can work part-time. And they understand people do this. The only plant that you can't do this with is uh it's called Trident. Trident is like the Harvard or the McDonald's of seafood processing plants. Like wherever there's a seafood processing plant, more than likely remember this name, Trident Seafoods. Is there. That's the only one you can't do it with, as far as I know. But you can do that, and that's another way of getting money. I'm telling you, this seafood processing business, guys, is all about your grind and all about your hustle. And that was a jewel I dropped for you to let you know that. So you can always get constant work. Even if your plant is not, you know, can't find a work at your plant, you can go somewhere to another plant while you're, you have downtime at your plant. Now, what else could I tell you guys? Uh, the work is seasonal. It's seasonal work. So you could be working for two months, three months, four months, five months, six months. Seven. It depends on your contract. The average contract is about um, three months. I would say the average contract is about, is, uh, is about three months. Now, it's seasonal work, but some people make this full-time job for them. Now, this is how you make it a full-time job. You can work three months at one plant, and then once your contract is up with that plant, you can go to another plant and work three or four months. Now, you see that? You got four, five, six, seven, almost half, over, over half of the year you're working. Some people work two to three contracts a year. Some people work one. Some people work two. Some people work one long contract for like five or six months. But if you're not satisfied... And you want to make more money, you can work A season and B season. Look at look that up where A, B, A season is and B season. And you can work, I mean, literally between six to eight months doing that. So now another thing, question that people always ask me. Philly Dom, is it cold in Alaska? Let me talk to you guys about this. It's cold in Alaska. But people do not understand it's not cold year round, if that makes sense. Or at least in certain parts of Alaska, it's not cold year round. So I'm going to say 
let's break this down from from okay from let me see April April to September the weather is fair it's not freezing cold it's bearable weather most people if you're from the East Coast in the United States or certain parts of Europe you can deal with the weather the weather is not really cold now from September to April the weather is cold and it snows a lot in some areas and the weather is cold the Alaska that you see on TV but the weather is not cold year round in all parts of Alaska so if you one of them guys or females that can't take cold weather you can try to get a contract that can bring you up to Alaska in like April or May or June and you can work out work it out until like September and you will not really experience super cold weather promise you that and also you know the uh, the, the in some parts of Alaska during the um, certain months doing okay let me break it down to you again from like september no let's go with let's go i'm hoping i'm not confusing you guys let's go with um april to september most of the time is light it's light man it's a lot of light it's gonna get dark until like 11 12 at night and it's like a twinkle and then if you're dealing with from like september to April when you're up there, it gets dark early, like around three, three in the afternoon. It depends. I can't, it's too much to talk about. This would be a whole nother video, but in the cold months, it's darker, longer period of time. And in the warmer months in Alaska, it's a lot light for a lot longer time. But it all depends on what part of Alaska you're, you're working in and where you're at in Alaska. That's the easiest way to say it. Now, um, some good jobs to get would be dock crew. That's a good job. Uh, freezer crew, because nobody wants to work in the freezer, so you'll get a lot of hours. If you want to work in the freezer, you'll definitely get a lot of hours because nobody likes to do that job. And then they have uh, shipping. Shipping is another good job because after the, the uh, seafood processing food goes through the whole situation it needs to go through as far as the processing, it goes to shipping and they have to package it up in containers, boxes, whatever they want to put it in and ship it out and it goes to the airport and you will get a lot of hours because that has to get done because if it doesn't get shipped out, nobody makes money off of it so it has to get shipped out. And then you have a mess hall crew. Like I said, anybody that has experience in the restaurant business, sorry about that guys. If anybody has experience in the restaurant, in the restaurant business, you can get a job in the mess hall and that's a good job because you will make a lot of money because sometimes we get three meals, sometimes even four meals in a 24 hour cycle. Also, they need people for sorters, to sort fish, and they have this other department called uh, Fresh Market, which once it comes from the dock crew, once the, the, the crew on the docks grab, take, grabs, takes the fish from the fishermen, they send it to the people in uh, Fresh Market and you have to cut off the heads and gut out the fish. It's a whole process what they do. Get the eggs out of the fish. They get a lot of hours as well. And what's another position? Oh, if some of you guys went to college, like I said before, they have, they have administration positions. So, man, they need secretaries and other different positions. It'd be too much to go talk about in this video right now, but they need people in administration. And, man, you'll get a lot of hours because they always need people for that now the million dollar question how much money can i make working as a seafood process in alaska that is the million dollar question the the more fish i'm gonna keep repeating this the more fish that are caught the more money you will make so it all depends on the fishermen catching fish the more fish they catch, the more money you make. So now, you guys, after I've did two videos already on this, this is my part three on how to be a seafood, pro how to get a seafood processing job in Alaska. 
and how much money do they make in 2019? I'll come with this answer. And I'm gonna keep doing research and I'm gonna keep doing more videos to give you guys the best answer I can. A seafood processor can make 1500 to 800 monthly in peak season. I repeat, in peak season, plus bonus. So you can make between 1500 a month to 8000 a month in peak season. Now, guys, this is a very, 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 very wide topic. It depends on a lot of things. But this was the average number that I came up with. Now, if you're with a, uh, like I said, uh, a floating processor, you get crew share. So you can make this or you could probably make a little bit more than this. It depends on a lot of different things, but from overall, from doing my research and, fit, and um, talking to people in the seafood industry and different companies, this is what I came up with. Fifteen to 8000 monthly. Now, if you guys have any more questions, because this video has been pretty long, if you guys have any more questions regarding the seafood industry, I consider myself now to be a seafood, uh, seafood processor specialist. So, do not be scared. Do not be afraid. Hit me up via my uh, information. The fastest way to reach me, like I said before, is Instagram. Check, check in the description blocks. All my information is there. And um, Philly Dom wants to help you guys. Because like I said, when I embarked on this, uh, this lifestyle, this career, I did not know much about the seafood processing industry. And it's sort of like a taboo industry that's not really talked about in a mainstream job uh, networking field. So, not, not, so, so not a lot of people know about this type of job. So now that I have this job, I'm passing on the knowledge that I have to you, your family, your friends, and everybody around you. So do not be scared to reach out to me. And I'm going to keep doing these videos. And I'm going to keep pushing these videos out to give you guys all the information about the seafood processing industry. And also, if you want to know about how to be a, uh, get a job as a deckhand on a, uh, on a fishing boat or any other type of jobs, in the seafood industry, reach out to me. If I don't know the information, I'll get the information to you because I'm well connected now in Alaska with a lot of people in the seafood industry. So I have a lot of knowledge and I just want to pour all that knowledge on to you guys. So once again, please support the Philly Dime movement. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give this video a like and please share this video with anybody that needs a job. Once again, thank you for taking the time out to look at this video and more videos on how to get a job in the seafood processing industry and the monthly pay. I'm going to keep bringing more and more videos, videos similar to this out. I got a little sidetrack because right now I'm in uh, Playa de Carmen, Mexico because uh, my season is over, but I'm going to still keep pushing these videos. In a couple months, I'll be back in Alaska doing my thing. So once again, please subscribe to my channel. Please give this video a like. And thank you for being a part of the Philly Don movement. Peace out.